Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Trevor Beck. I'm the Google Evangelist here at McEwen University. And today we're going to talk about easy video conferencing using Google Hangouts. Now, some people may be familiar with using Hangouts as part of Google+. We're actually going to specifically take a look at how Hangouts work within a domain. So if you have a Google for Business account or a Google for Education account, the Hangouts works a little bit different, and there's some really cool advantages that go along with that. However, as we go along, uh, I'd like to point out that off onto the right of the screen, you'll see some links there. One of the links there is to the uh, question, the Q&A sheet. It's an open Google Doc, so anyone can go in, put in a question, and as we go through the, the session, I'll be taking a look at that to see uh, what questions may be uh, coming up. Um, we are also going to... Um, to have a chance at, you know, at the end to do some Q&A. We're going to also take a look at how you can run a meeting using Google Hangouts. One of the things that I really want to try and do for this session is show people that when you're in a domain and you're using the Hangouts for video calls, there's some really cool advantages to it. And at the institution that we're at, it's getting harder and harder to find uh, meeting rooms. So, of course, if I have a, a quiet place, I can do a Hangout with people from all over the place. And Speaking of people from all over the place, I'm going to do some introductions of the, my guests that are going to be joining to help me demonstrate some of the, the topics that we're talking about. So, Andrew, if we can start with you, please. Yeah, I'm uh, Andy Hatchett, retired, and my basic job now is running a community on Google. That's all I do. <laughs> okay, next, please. Sure. Jill, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm Jill Terio. I'm a high school teacher, and I do a lot of presentations for Google Apps. Thank you very much, Heather. Hi, my name is Heather Crafter, and I Did craft online. Excellent. Thank you both, Jill and Heather. We heard you all, John. I'm John Colson. I teach computer science and educational technology in which we make fairly good use of Google Apps and Google+. And last, please, Michael. Yeah, I'm Michael Daniels. I uh, actually work, my day job is uh, construction in construction business, but uh, I, I'm on Google Plus quite often and all the time, and you'll see me all over the place as far as that goes. And I also do a, a fun thing, game shows on Friday night, so. Yeah, if you, if you guys uh, you want to see some fun stuff, uh, Michael and, and Heather and Andrew are involved in this this the game show stuff. It's a gas. So uh, you can follow Michael and Heather and Andrew, and I'm sure they'll post somewhere on their Google Plus when they're doing the game shows. And um, lots of people are participating. You can also participate outside of the actual broadcast with other people and compete against them. So a lot of fun. Thank you all for joining me. So let's talk first about Google Hangouts. So a Hangout is a conversation. And there's three ways that you can have a conversation with, with Google. You can do it as text-based, just like Messenger. You can do it as a video call, or sorry, uh, an audio call. So you can just have audio, no video, or whatever. And you can do it as a video call, which is what we're doing right now. One of the cool things about this is as, as people are meeting, you can combine the two. So I could actually call somebody on a landline through this Hangout and have them join us. And the great thing about that is now I can include people who maybe don't have a camera, uh, who maybe don't have a headset, they're not comfortable using tech, but they know how to pick up their phone and answer it. So that's one of the nice advantages that that Hangouts gives us that we can take advantage of, especially when we work in an, uh, a company or an organization where you don't always have a lot of tech-savvy people. Everyone knows how to, use a, uh, how to use a phone. Everyone knows how to click on a link so that they can discuss and look at documents that we're going to be sharing. So let's talk about how we would start a Hangout video call. Gmail is where a lot of people start. You have a chat window off to the side. You can click on that, do your text, start your video call from there. The institution that I work at, we don't uh, use Google uh, on this for, for staff and faculty for our email and our calendaring. So we have to find another way to get the Hangout started. And uh, one of the things we could do is we could use Calendar. So Google Calendar, you can create an appointment and it'll automatically create a link for the Hangout video call. And as you invite people into that event, they will get a copy of the message and they will have a copy of the link. So you can use the Calendar uh, app for doing that. 
Again, if you're like an organization like us where you're using uh, email and calendaring client that's different, that calendar stuff typically does not sync back and forth. So it ends up being like a, another tool you use and sometimes there's a little bit of confusion that goes along. So the nicest, easiest way is a web page, starting off a web page. Now Google just introduced a new way of doing a hangout for um, for personal email accounts or for personal calls. I'm going to bring that up here. I'm going to share that with you in a second. Make sure I have the uh, right screen up here first. So we'll use that screen. And make sure. Is that working for everyone? Can you all see that? I'm assuming that's a yes. Okay, so now they've come up with hangouts.google.com. Thank you very much. Google's going to be showing me this, uh, this, this lovely display here. I'll just go ahead. This is my first time with this account going through. Gives us a start on it. I'll just skip through all this stuff. One of the nice things I like about this new page is it shows you how you can start your three different kinds. I can have a message hangout that gets started. I can do a phone call. I can do a video call. So it brings to forward really quickly that, hey, I can make phone calls with Google Hangouts. Now, to right now, Google allows you to make free phone calls to any phone number that's in Canada or the United States. So even if I'm in Europe, the call that I'm making is to Canada or the United States is still going to be free. And you can do that whether it's on your desktop or on your mobile device, it still all works. So it's a, that's really nice that they brought that up forward. However, what happens is I start this, I now have to go through the process of inviting people in. And I don't necessarily want to do that in the situation where I work. So Google actually has something that they do for, um, for, for, for domains. So let me share a different screen with you. Uh, I'm just going to share my desktop. Excuse the uh, the uh, the scary page for a second here, while it loads. So this is the screen that I get when I go to g.co/hangouts. So g.co/hangouts. If I'm logged in with a personal account, I will go straight to my standard hangout uh, call, and it'll start the hangout automatically. Because I'm signed into a domain. In this case, it's my training domain. It says, "Hey, you know what? This is a this is a landing page for anybody that's part of this domain, and if they want, they can come in and join in." Now, back in the old days when we used to have these chat rooms, you'd have to always enter the name of a chat room. This is no different. I could go in, enter the hangout name. So I might say, "Hang with Trev." Usually, no spaces. I hit enter, and it will now send me into the actual Hangout window that we're used to, that we, we can see, where I can invite people in and stuff like that. The other nice thing about that is that when I do join in, it's going to give me a full link up here, and the link usually is something like this, slash whatever this name is, and I can take that URL, copy and paste it, and send it off to a, 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 a user. Now. One of the things that we uh, have to be careful of is when we start our our um, hangout on air, or sorry, our hangouts. Typically, they are limited to the domain. So when I start a hangout, only people within my domain can actually get access to it unless I invite them in. Even if they have that special link, unless I've set it up to say allow people outside of the domain to join in, they can't join in. So you still have that privacy that's available to you. Now, the only uh, um, caveat with all of that is when you do a Hangout through this, this uh, Hangout window, it's like a room. So I can walk into room 101, you could walk into room 101, anyone can walk into room 101. So if I start a Hangout and it's called 101, anybody can join in because it's just basically a generic Hangout where we can get uh, users added. If I want true privacy and stuff, I might just put in a really complicated name and uh, use that when I send off emails to people to join. Any questions on anything I've talked about yet, guys? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. The reason I love that, that web page is because it's very easy for the non-tech user. So when the first time someone's going to be joining me to do a Hangout, I first thing I say is make sure you have Chrome running really important only because Chrome has the extensions and information, the plugin already installed in it. 
if it's the first time using a Hangout with Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, you have to download a plugin, and that takes a couple of steps, and people tend to get lost. Most people already have Chrome, uh, especially in our institution, so I can just say, hey, you know what? Launch Chrome, so that's step one. Make sure you're logged in with your, your work account, not your personal account, because this isn't going to work then. So Chrome, log in with your personal account, go to g.co slash hangouts. Now, I've actually created a Hangout for our, our uh, institution, so mcewen.ca slash Hangouts is just a redirect to g.co Hangouts to make it easier for everyone to remember. But the nice thing about it is it's very easy, and that's the three things they need to know. Chrome, logged in with my work account, and uh, go to mcewen.ca slash Hangouts. Once they've done that, they're in this Hangout, which looks very similar to what you're seeing on screen right now kind of thing. They can, uh, we can do a chat. If they're not, um, got, have a video camera or stuff, I can actually go and invite them through a phone number. And I'm not, you won't be able to see it, but uh, as part of the Hangout, there's an invite people uh, complex. And I'll put in some documentation later. You guys can look at it. But you can invite people by their phone number and just dial them up. So now we're back to what I talked about before where I can contact and invite people in who don't have headsets, who don't have a camera. They can just use their phone. How am I doing so far? Is that making clear to sense to everyone? Awesome. Um, so by default, there are a couple of different items that show up on the screen. I'm going to see if this solves our, uh, our uh, problem of the um, multiple windows stuff happening. Let me know if it does. Nope. I will try this one more time then. Let's do it. And that won't either. Okay, let's do this then. Imagine if you will, when you join a Hangout, on the top left, there's two icons that show up. One's a blue icon that allows you to do chat. And the chat's basically among the people that are joining in on this uh, discussion. So it doesn't go outside, it doesn't save or anything, but it's just a quick chat when I want to send a, a quick link to somebody or a private comment that I can do that. That's the first icon. The other is screen sharing. And the beauty of that is anybody can screen share. Once you're in this Hangout any, and the plugin's been loaded, so you're in this Hangout, anyone can screen share. So when I'm doing troubleshooting, it's easy for me to say, hey, just click on that second icon, the green one, and share your screen, share your desktop. The nice thing about that is I can do all sorts of uh, great things with it. So for example, uh, here we go, watch out for the uh, woo-woo effect. And we move it over here. But I can actually do a presentation. So I can have a number of people. This could present, presentation could also be showing up on a board in front of a classroom at a distance. And I could be sitting there going along and giving my presentation. Because you're seeing the screen just as I am, I can talk about the Google Apps, the cloud storage, the easy collaboration, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm sharing my screen, but my audio is still being picked up. Really strong and powerful for doing meetings. Whoops, there we go, the streaming thing. Guys, any questions, any comments? Really? How about, how about you guys? How are you guys using Hangouts? Besides for playing playing games, I could probably share. Uh, do you can you hear me? Oh, it's yeah. yeah, Jill, can you maybe try uh, turning off your camera and then trying again? And your bandwidth uh, is uh, is kind of slow today. Yeah. All right, try that again. Is that better? Yeah, I can hear, we can hear your audio, so let's, let's, uh, let's hear what's going on. Yeah, uh, to use it, uh, for me, I had a great experience. It was last year, one of my students uh, came to me on the second day of school, and she said that she had to leave because she had a funeral in South Africa. Then, uh, so we figured out, like, after looking to how can we manage this so that she, can, she doesn't miss any classes or any uh, lectures that I'm doing. So we f figured out that we use the Hangouts, and then she really liked it. It was really awesome for her uh, to have access to me while I was teaching and also for her not missing any classes. That's one way that I use it so far. 
And, and one of the nice things about that is, uh, I mean, you can just start up a Hangout fairly simple with just your mobile device. You don't need to have a camera and, and a computer and all the, the extra bells and whistles. It's just a, a simple stream from your, your, your iPhone or whatever Android device you have, and it works really, really well. Very cool. Anyone else have anything they want to share? <laughs> sure. I know uh, we have done uh, actual interviews with it. Uh, using it in the in the workforce, doing actual interviews with people uh, with our temporary services that we use. We actually have, I mean, I have a whole list. I've used it for many, many things. Our foreman out on the job sites, communicating two, three different states, all communicating with each other through this. Um, again, using the mobile for that kind of thing, so, so we've done that. Um, I actually tutor Spanish because I'm bilingual in Spanish, so I tutor Spanish. This works out really, really good, so we don't have to worry about having someone in the place, and we can record it, so everything's recorded, so the, uh, you know, the parent and the student can go back, review, and look and listen to everything that was said. So, all, all good stuff. I mean, I mean, I could go into a lot more, but that's just some of the things I'm doing. Um, I didn't know you spoke. You tutored Spanish. I'm going to talk to you a bit about that after the show because uh, I, I need to learn some stuff. Um, Yes, so, and one of the things that I wanted to point out what Michael talked about was the fact that he's got people out in the field and great use cases where you can go and, you know, if someone has a problem, they can call back to the headquarters and, and, do, uh, and, and say, you know, here's a solution here or we need to you know, show us what you're, you're looking at. I actually did some work on some uh, a lighting piece and I had a ballast I was trying to replace and I don't know enough about electrical and stuff. So I actually was online with a guy from Florida who was helping me out. Um, in the middle of the winter, he's on his iPhone, and I'm showing him the ballast of the lighting I'm looking at while he's, you know, 30-some 30, 30 above and enjoying the nightlife uh, outside while I was freezing. But, I mean, those kind of instances are really cool. The one thing I want to talk about, though, for today is agendas and how it's so easy for us to, to take advantage of these meetings and stuff. Now, quite often people will, uh, when they create their documents, they do two different documents. They'll create an agenda document and they'll create the meeting minutes. And I've never understood why those have to be separated. And so when I do this kind of stuff, I always have all my agendas tied into one document and I don't have to worry about flipping back and forth, looking what happened then and what happened here. So as a demonstration, we're going we're gonna to hold a meeting right now. I'm going to be sh uh, screen sharing. I'm just going to let you know that I am not going to be typing. So when you see typing happen, that's not Trevor typing. That's somebody else is going to be inputting, and we're going to put on uh, do a meeting. Uh, and guys, I mean, you feel free to unmute yourselves because we're going to be having a discussion as if it's an actual meeting here. So we'll just kind of run that. So let me get the agenda up here on the screen. And again, as I said, I'm I am not typing. And is everyone on the the agenda page now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks for meeting. So we have two items of discussion we're going to talk today. We're going to talk about our favorite movies you've seen this summer and the weather where you live. And John's going to be kind enough to be looking after the, uh, the notes and stuff. And uh, just as a side for everyone else, one of the nice things about this is it doesn't matter what page I'm on, the, the document can be updated even while I'm on a different page. And I'll show that in a sec when I insert a, a page break here in a bit. So, uh, John, if you can start typing. Uh, Michael, do you want to tell me what, uh, what, what's your favorite movie so far this summer? Uh, well, really, the only movie I saw this summer was Jurassic World. So, Oh, okay. I haven't seen Jurassic World. I got to go watch Ant-Man. Oh, we'll talk about that. John, are you, are you in on my agenda there? I am, but I don't have edit access. What? Okay, give me two seconds. I thought that was open to the world. <laughs> oh, you're right. Um, and, of course, one of the things that's really important is making sure you've got the uh, settings correct here, which I'm going to do right now. Um, okay, okay, if you want to do a refresh, you should be good now. And he's left, and here he comes back in, and we'll try this again. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so John, can you go down down to the uh, the meeting minutes? You're on the agenda. We're on page two. Oh, I didn't see meeting minutes. Right. See, right. This, this is how great this works. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah, okay. Ah, how about that? There we are. So, My Michael sees Jurassic World, and uh, Heather saw Ant Man. What'd you think of Ant Man, Heather? 
I thought it was pretty neat. I, I have uh, teenage whoa, sons. Whoa. So hey, hang on. Don't sorry. Let's be be careful. No spoilers for any movies, guys. No, I was just gonna say I have teenage sons, so watching superhero mo movies is pretty normal for me. So I would <laughs> never I would never tell you how it ends or what happens, but true typical Marvel, there will be more. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can tell you the the dinosaurs win. Yeah, <laughs> that's a spoiler. They, they they beat all the superheroes. Andrew, have you seen the movie yet? Uh, no, actually, I spend too much time watching TV series to what? actually watch movies. Okay, what's your TV series? Oh, uh, uh, Madam Secretary, uh, Outlander. I've got like thirty-seven series I watch every He's week. He's not kidding. I've seen the list. He has thirty-seven <laughs> that he watches. I'm not kidding. Okay, uh, let's. You know what? Let's let's assume that we've uh, gone through this discussion of our favorite movies, and let's now uh, go into. That's good. That's good enough, John. Let's go to weather. Jill, can you tell me the weather and where you live? Yes, uh, I live in Red Deer, Alberta, and right now it's a beautiful sunshine, and it's a plus 15. We're talking Celsius right now, guys. This is true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we have some Americans with us. Uh, uh, how about you, Andrew? Where, where and what weather? Uh, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. It's presently overcast, 81 degrees, with a heat index of 93. Oh, nice. Heather, where are you? I am in Butte, Montana, and I'm probably experiencing the same as Jill because it is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15 degrees Celsius. Excellent. I already got Heather. You'll notice that John's typing and I'm typing at the same time because we can actually, all of us, be working on this. So um, uh, who's left? Michael, what's, uh, what's yours? I am in Greenville, South Carolina. That's the east coast of the United States, and it is overcast. I usually get whatever Andrew has about three hours later, so I always get whatever he's had. And we're we're at about ninety degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and I have no idea Celsius. I don't I don't have a conversion. But <laughs> Google, Google now can help me out, I'm sure. But uh, uh, ninety degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius is thirty two. Oh, that's just too hot. <laughs> Okay, I got to stop the presentation there, or stop the uh, the the uh, screen share. So what I wanted to point out is, is look how easy it was for for us to uh, have a meeting. We're using this agenda. Uh, we're sharing the document. At one point, you saw John was typing, and I was trying to ca uh, help him out by typing as well. So anyone can can join in to do that. But it didn't matter where everybody lived. We are carrying on a conversation, and I always hear people say, "I have to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the conversation uh, with people when I do a meeting." That's why I need to have a meeting in place. Hangouts makes that face-to-face -face happen. And you notice as as we talk, Heather's going to say something in a second. It's going the camera automatically switches. One of the things that I really liked about the document was being able to see who's typing what at that time. So it has a little color-coded icon for when. Uh, when John is typing and then when, when Trevor is typing. So I could see actually who edits it. That's pretty cool. And and one of the nice things about that as well is that as the meeting goes on, let's say that I type in and that we're going to accomplish something by the 13th and I type in the 3rd, it's easy for someone to quickly say, hey Trevor, you did a typo here, that's the wrong date, can you correct that? So a lot of that stuff that happens when after a meeting you always send out a copy of the minutes to everyone to review and stuff, you can actually be reviewing it while the meeting's going on. And because it's a Google Doc that we can share with each other and send off to each other, you can have access to edit and review it and stuff like that and make comments and tell people, hey, you know, here's a review. So you don't actually spend that valuable first five minutes reviewing the document. It's a Google Doc. We all have access to it. We can all go in, take a look at it. And so when we get to that part in the agenda saying review last week's minutes, we've already done it. We can just skip along. And if we need to, we can add that as new, as something new or something old to the meeting. Hey, Trevor. Yeah. I've got a cute little story from a colleague here at McEwen, uh, just to show you how comfortable you can get within a, a hangout. Uh, a colleague of mine here, her husband had to be in Calgary, which is about 150 uh, miles away, for a year. They used to meet every night on hangouts for dinner. It got to the point, uh, a few months in, where he asked her to pass the salt. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, that'd be, uh, and what happened? Um, 
I don't know if she tried to email it to him or what. <laughs> I, I would have gone and searched for a, 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 a GIF somewhere and just posted it in the in the conversation and sent it to him. Oh, that's very funny. Yeah, and it's it's surprising. Like a lot of people get up um, get up get upset get get up tight or tense about doing these video conferencing. But I mean, ask any of the guys there that have been doing this for a while. I mean, it's so natural once you get past that initial hurdle of you know is my camera working and everything else. It's just very natural. Like I said, the camera switches for you. It's like a conversation because when someone talks to the right, I'm going to turn my head to look at them. Google does the switching for us. It's very natural. And I actually have um, a gentleman that's working out of uh, Red Deer for our psych program, and he's got meetings that he does with staff up here at McEwen. So they have a, a link. Remember that the Google Hangout link? They just go into there every Time, uh, every Friday at 10, let's say, they use the same link every time. They all join in, whether it's on their Google, their mobile device, or their desktop, and the meeting starts. And it's very natural. And uh, surprisingly, even with a mobile device, you can get a lot done with the typing and everything else on it and adding to documents. Very, very, uh, very cool. Thanks for sharing that, John. Trevor, I have something. Um, I run a website and it's an online store and the person who helps me with this store actually lives in Arizona which is 1100 miles away from me and I'm able to be in a document or we actually use uh, Google Sheets and I go in and I put in the information that I want her to put on for a certain product or I'll give her a picture to add to that product listing or I'll go in and correct something that might be incorrect and she can just go and input it and we're sitting here in a hangout and I'll show her the product I'll go back over and see yes we have three of those you go ahead and put it in it's very very easy it's so simplistic that we don't even use the phone anymore we just strictly do everything through hangouts yeah once once you get into it it's very cool and like, like Heather said it's it's easy and even people who aren't like I said before who aren't Tech uh, comfortable with technology can click on a link or go to and then enter in the word whatever the name of the hangout is and and sharing documents. If any of you haven't taken my uh, uh, Taste of Google Apps uh, session yet, please by all means take a look for it. Uh, those of you that are here at McEwen, um, but uh, by all means please play around because the strength is just amazing that you, stuff you can get done. Okay, uh, we're. I, I think I'm pretty much finished here, so I don't really have a lot else to say. But uh, any last comments from uh, participants? Um, only if you wanted more use case. But if you've got plenty, then we'll go on. <laughs> yeah, th yeah. Thanks, Mike. I think I think yeah, people have the idea. No um, worries. Appreciate that because I mean Michael does a lot of stuff, so he can he can uh, give us all sorts of neat tips. So for more information, those of you that are here at McEwen, you can go to mcewen.ca slash Google. I've got a Google website set up there where we put in information about some of the services that Google provides us. There's a banner on the right that says tutorials. If you go onto that banner there, it's give you a, a list of links that you can get some very basic tutorials. There's three at the bottom, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. They're called uh, links for collaboration. So how to do shared documents, how to properly use the comments versus the text change or suggested text changes. If you use that, those tools in Microsoft, these are much easier and more effectively and a lot easier to read. But I mean, it's, it's the same concept. So I mean, you won't have any problem doing that. Uh, at that uh, tutorial piece, our tutorial page, there's two links on the, our banners on the right. One's for tips for Google Apps. It's a blog I run where I throw in tips in there, usually about stuff that you don't find elsewhere, things that I've discovered in that that are customable, customized more so for uh, the McEwen audience. But there's lots of cool things that you can find out in there. As well, there's my YouTube channel for these Let's Talk series of videos that I do. I've done everything uh, focusing on Google Apps. Uh, the Chrome browser, there's some really cool strength in that. Uh, the um, hang on, da -da 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 -da. profiles, Google profiles. Quite often, people get confused on. I have my personal Gmail, I have my uh, my work e uh, email, and the two kind of combine, and so I have to switch. But I have to log out of one, and then I can't access this file because I'm logged in the other. A lot of people get confused about that. So there's a great tutorial on there on how to set up profiles, so you can have two different pieces there. Okay. That's pretty much all I've got. Um, Michael, were you trying to say something, or oh, you were coughing? Okay, 
All right, so that's pre pretty much it. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. And if you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I will also put in some contact links into the video for the other uh, people that are in here. And uh, thank uh, thanks to, again to my panel for joining us. See you guys. Thank you.